Yang. Mr. Speaker, it is a privilege to be given the opportunity to speak on the appropriation bill. I would like to focus on national responsible management of the economy and on our goal of returning the government's books to surplus by 2014-2015. Mr. Speaker, just over a month ago, the Honorable Bill English delivered his fourth budget, which outlined national's platform for growth and for building a more competitive New Zealand economy, while delivering on better services for New Zealanders. Despite facing ongoing global financial uncertainties and the aftermath of the tragic Christchurch earthquake, National has managed the government's finances responsibly without having to borrow more. And we have delivered and will continue to deliver on better public services to New Zealanders. In these unsettled times, National can be trusted not to follow our European counterparts in bringing the country to its knees by continuing the legacy of debt filled excesses. Greece, as we all know, is on the brink of economic disaster, with Spain following closely behind as the graduateness of 28 Spanish banks were downgraded recently. A buy now and pay later ethos has been the driving force for so many years in recent times, for, for, for so many in recent times, and the end result has been, has been catastrophic. Instead, we would do well to adopt the save now, spend later philosophy of our, of our Asian neighbors. This outlook is one of the reasons why countries such as China have been growing, have been doing so well economically. China has been growing. Uh, China has grown to be the world's second largest economy, a force to be reckoned with. China is still generating economic growth and is inevitably the country that New Zealand should focus on. Our trade with China has been growing rapidly. In 2009, our trade grew by 8%. In 2010, by 16% and in 2011 by 15 percent. We are all, we are well positioned to reach the goal of doubling our trade with China to 20 billion dollars in 2015, which will benefit all New Zealanders. Mr. Speaker, we should embrace and regard our Asian neighbor's success as being beneficial to New Zealand. Not only has China become our second large trading partner, it is also our fastest growing source of tour for tourism. Tourism is one of New Zealand's single largest export earning industries and employs one in 20 people in the country. Recent figures show that the number of visitors from China in the year ended May 2012 increased by 32.3 percent. The spending by Chinese visitors in the year ended March 2012 increased by 20.1 percent. This spending is a gain for New Zealand's economy. I understand that Tourism New Zealand has a comprehensive strategy to further develop the China market. Mr. Speaker, as a member of the Health Select Committee, I would like to speak about national's success in delivering a better, sooner public health service. Despite difficult situation, financial situ conditions, protecting and investing in better frontline health services is a priority for the national government. It was announced in budget 2012, national's commitment of almost $1.5 billion extra over four years for our public health service. This will bring our spending on the health service to $14.1 billion in 2012 and 2013. This will help deliver better operations and shorter waiting time. It will also help to continue 
the significant improvements under national, which has seen record successes for emergency departments treating patients faster, record numbers of children immunized, record numbers of smokers quitting, shorter waits for cancer treatment, and more doctors and nurses working in our public health system. Again, this has not been possible without the responsible physical management by national. Mr. Speaker, uh, national order, must order, be... Or, sorry, point of order. Mr. The member, sir, sir, is there any chance of talking to the people who are doing the volume? I think, I think something has gone wrong with the system and it's, it's, I, it is I, much louder than it normally is. I think they've probably picked up your message and will uh, uh, yeah, make any modification necessary. Dr. Zhang Yang. Mr. Speaker, National must be commended for doing their very best in guiding New Zealand through uncertainty, despite the tightest economic conditions. We also have to address the previous Labour government's legacy of mismanagement, now, which included giving expensive handouts and encouraging a culture of welfare dependency. For example, National has to mop up their mess in chasing the repayment of student loans. We are working hard to recover debts of $2.6 billion, of which $409 million are overdue from overseas-based borrowers. Our scheme introduced in October 2010 targets 1,000 Australia-based borrowers has netted $20 million, with a further $2.9 million underpayment. Arrangement, underpayment arrangements. This scheme, this scheme has now extended to 57,000 borrowers in Australia and the United Kingdom over the next two and a half years, and is a priority for national. National are being realistic. Given the tough global economic conditions, it is, it is so easy for the opposition parties to say we are not doing enough. They lack credibility on growth, jobs, and responsible fiscal management. The alternative is to return to the buy now and pay later ethos, which I spoke about earlier and which has been the backbear for many of European countries. The world is paying the price as country of country in Europe is at risk of being toppled like dominoes. Instead, nationals should be commanded for policies which will help steer New Zealand through tough economic times, getting our books back to surplus by 2014-15, creating new jobs and delivering better public services for New Zealanders. What more approval can you get to support the national, that national is on the right track of getting back to surplus uh, than June's International Monetary Fund report, he said, quote, the planned deficit reduction Pass strikes a balance between the need to contain both public and external debt increases while limiting any adverse impact on economic growth during the recovery. The authorities' plan to return to budget surplus by 2014-15 should be put, should put New Zealand in a better position to deal with future shocks and the long-term costs of aging. Moreover, it will relieve pressure on monetary policy and thereby the exchange rate, helping contain the current account deficit over the medium, medium term." End quote. Mr. Speaker, the national-led government is continuing to do the right things. Our strong economic growth agenda, disciplined spending, responsible fiscal management, our sound economic and financial institutions, in-demand products, particularly by Asia, and the Christchurch rebuilding stimulus are all factors that will su support New Zealand's resilience and give New Zealanders the brighter, a brighter future. Mr. Speaker, I recommend the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, um, before I call the member, this is the last speech.